Hey there, it's Kat, and this is Bruise and Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another review for my David Gemmell project, and today we're going to be reviewing Waylander. This is a book in the Draenei saga, and I've said before that there are multiple ways to read this series, and if you're reading it in the order it was written, then this would be the third book you'd pick up. And if you were reading it chronologically, and you didn't choose to include the two sort of standalone books that come before it, then this would probably be the first one that you would pick up. And I have to say, of the two books that I would start this series with, being Legend or Waylander, you can't go wrong with either of them. I honestly think that Waylander and Legend are two of the best books that Gamal wrote, and I think they are fantastic representations of his writing, the types of worlds that he creates, and the characters and the sort of things that they go through. I think it's all really, really well executed in both of those books, so if you were going to pick up any of David Gimmel's books, I would either recommend that you start with Waylander or Legend. So I feel like it's pretty obvious already that I really love Waylander. It is a very, very close second to Legend to being one of my favourite books. Like, Legend is my favourite book of all time, but I think I realised when I was rereading Waylander this time that I, it's very, very close. It's so good, and I had so much fun with this book. So, the plot. Waylander is about an assassin who sort of becomes a reluctant hero and becomes embroiled with the good in the world, even though he has acted as a force of evil in the past. So the book actually begins with Waylander just trying to get his horse back off some guys that stole his horse, and he just happens to run into them while they're torturing a priest. And he's not really bothered about saving the priest, but the guys are really irritating and he wants to get his horse back. So he ends up helping the priest. And then very soon after that he ends up travelling with the priest, Dardalian, and a woman and three children who are refugees from the murderous bands that have been roaming the land. So the general situation in Draenei Lands is not great, and that's mostly because their king was just murdered by an assassin. There are a bunch of people called the Dark Brotherhood who are going around murdering priests of the source because they won't fight back and they're basically just dying all over the place, and they're not going to do anything about it because they will not fight back. The Draenei are also at war, and they're not doing fabulously in battle. They've sort of been split across different fortresses, and alongside Waylander's story and the things that he's doing, we also follow the Siege of Dross Perdal, which has some absolutely fantastic characters and scenes in it, and I'll break that down when I talk about the different storylines that happen in this. So firstly we follow Waylander, who is, as I said, a reluctant hero. He is an assassin and he feels really guilty about what he did to the Draenei King, and he's kind of trying to find a way to atone for what he's done. And the way that he sort of entwines himself with the priest Dardalian, it kind of changes both of them forever, and their progression throughout this book is so interesting to see. I really like the inclusion of Dardalian in this book because he starts off as a priest who just believes in the goodness of everything, and he would never fight back because that isn't what the source would want. And then after encountering Waylander and something happening, he changes, and he starts to understand that he could help more people and have more of an impact on the power of the source if he maybe did fight back a little bit. And it's really great to see the way that people's thinking starts to change. It's not everybody's thinking, but it is a select number of priests that maybe come around to his way of thinking, and we get the introduction of the Thirty. I really like the way that Gemmel handles the introduction of the Thirty, because it's not just like, I had a dream, we must be warrior priests now, and that's what we're going to do. It sort of comes from a desire to change from what is just hopelessness and promised death into what if we can change things? Like, we don't know if it's right that we're doing this, but we're going to try and we're going to see and then we'll find out later. Because what we're doing, we're doing with the source in our hearts. Like, we think this is right and we're going to go with it. They're not really sure if it is true to the source, but they have faith. And I think that's such an interesting thing to see, because not everyone agrees with it, other priests don't agree with it, and it was fascinating to see people's mindsets and how they change. I think it is particularly effective in this book, because one of the major themes is having faith and choosing to do what is good. Whether or not that ends up with your eternal happiness doesn't really matter, because you're choosing to do what is for the greater good. So many characters throughout this book are affected by the choice to do something good, and whether doing something good will negate all of the bad that they've done, and how much good will negate all of the bad. Will one deed be enough? So I definitely just lost my train of thought, because my cat came in, and then my memory card filled up, so... 
I don't know what I was talking about. So let's talk about the two side-by-side -side storylines that are happening in this book. They start off together with Waylander and Dardalian meeting, and then they go their separate ways. Dardalian goes off to Dross Perdol, and with the Thirty being so newly formed, they go off to fight for the Draenei. Waylander is given a quest, which is essentially doomed, but he kind of deserves a doomed quest because he did spend 20 years doing things that were not particularly very nice. So his atonement is going to be very hard won. So Waylander is sent off to retrieve the armour of bronze, which is this sort of famed armour which was hidden by the old king and nobody can find it, it's disappeared, it's basically mythical and it's supposed to be a rallying point for the Draenei to sort of get behind and sort of galvanise them and help them sort of win the wars that they are in. So Waylander happens to find out that this is in Nardia lands and that basically starts his quest. Unfortunately for Waylander, he is hunted by a lot of people because he did spend 20 years building up enemies. The Draenei want to kill him, the Nardia want to kill him, the things that are guarding the armour of bronze want to kill him, and the Dark Brotherhood, who have been killing all the priests, also want to kill him because they don't want him to get the armour. So basically everyone has named Waylander public enemy number one. And he only has a certain amount of time to complete his quest because the armies of the Draenei are separated and the Vagrians are very close to winning the war. They are going to take Dross Perdol. But luckily for the Draenei, they have some very cool characters up their sleeve to, you know, keep them afloat up until Waylander can get the job done. There's Karnak, who is a deeply ambitious general who has the kind of personality that inspires men and he knows how to help them get behind him. And he's sort of keeping the fortress afloat. The 30 have joined the Draenei at Dross Perdol, so they are helping to keep sort of spiritual attacks away and sort of protecting the men from any sort of spiritual attack uh, as well as obviously fighting. I really like Karnak but I would also hate to be near him because there is something about how his ambitions run so deeply through him but he doesn't really show that to the outside world as much as you know you see it when you're reading his thoughts. And it kind of reads a little bit slimy to me, like as much as I'm like, oh yes, Karnak he does some really epic things, he's also kind of slimy. And it's kind of like, are you gonna be a dick? Probably. I don't, it's very questionable in terms of what's gonna win out his sense of honor or his need to climb that ladder. Who knows? I really enjoyed that. It was a really interesting conflict to have within the character and, you know, within me as I read about him. Because he also does some really epic things that I will talk about in the spoilery section because I don't want to ruin the surprise of awesomeness of some of the things that he does. Let's go back to Waylander because I just want to talk some more about him because I don't feel like I've done him justice. He's an incredibly skilled warrior and he carries around this double bolted crossbow, which is kind of his trademark thing, but don't be fooled, he could definitely kill you in a lot of other ways. I personally really enjoyed watching his inner turmoil as he goes from sort of despondent and then he gets a bit guilty and then as the book progresses he starts to think about what he could do in the world and how he could change and what he could change by doing good things if he chose to. He makes some rash decisions but I also kind of like that because he's been doing whatever he wants for 20 years and that is an emotional response to something that happened to him so when something else emotional happens to him when he makes a rash decision I feel like that is very within his character so I wasn't too mad when he did something that would normally make me want to smack some character upside the head for making a stupid decision because it just kind of made sense within his character. I haven't really spoken about Danielle who is the main female character within this book. She is Waylander's love interest and she appears at the very beginning of the book having saved some children from a raid where everybody else got murdered. She used to be an actress and then sort of moved away from that as things sort of got worse within Draenei Lands and she basically does whatever she needs to do to survive and she wants to help people survive. So when she first meets Waylander she really doesn't like him because <laughs> she's like you're a murderer, you're a killer, I don't want to be anywhere near you, you asshole. And I just really like the development of their relationship. And to me, it felt a lot more realistic than some of the other relationships, like Freck and Vare in Legend, and Tanaka Khan and Renya in King Beyond the Gate. I just, I just really liked their development in this. And I don't know if that's partly because it was kind of hate to love, but also not. I don't know. I, I just enjoyed them, and I liked that Danielle seemed like an autonomous person who actually probably could take care of herself. She just found herself embroiled in this situation and went with it and she would do whatever she needed to do to survive. And I just really like that about her, so yes, 
we love Danielle in this house. They also travel with another guy called Dermast who is constantly on the edge of betraying Waylander. Because why not? I, I guess everyone else is trying to kill him, so get in on the action, Dermast. In all seriousness, I actually really liked his character and the development that he goes through. I can't really go into more about that without spoiling anything. But before I move on to the spoilery section, I just want to say that I think this book has absolutely everything that you could want in a high fantasy book. There's a siege where badass characters are fighting for their lives, there's a bit of magic thrown in here or there. There's a quest with a countdown, there's a hate to love romance in there, there's betrayal. Oh, and there's also shapeshifters. But I'm not going to give any context to that without going into spoilers, so I'm going to say nothing else. I would really love it if you'd pick this book up if even one thing that I said interests you because I sat there reading this book and there were so many moments that I was like oh my god this is so cool I love it and I've read this book many times before I, I think I've read it about four times it's probably about my fifth time reading it and there are still times that I was sat there going this is so cool I just had a huge grin on my face it was so good and if you're after a really great fantasy book then I would totally recommend this one. Waylander kind of starts like a, a mini trilogy within the Draenei saga, like a lot of them are years and years between and the Waylander books are also like that. They sort of follow some characters that are occurring in each, they're not like a hundred years later like the difference between Legend and the King Beyond the Gate. So you could pick up the Waylander book as like a mini trilogy within, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that because you might spoil some things that happen in other books when you get to Waylander 2. Not this one, you can read this one whenever you want. So now I'm going to move into the spoilery section, so if you do not want spoilers then I would definitely head off now because I am going to just gush about some things that I really loved about this book. I've just been trying so hard to hold it in and not spoil anything but I just really want to talk about some cool moments so if you don't want spoilers for like the absolutely awesome epic things that happen then please be gone, goodbye. I think I've given enough time now. Do you think I've given enough time? I think I've given enough time. So, spoilers. So a lot of the things I want to talk about do take place at Dross Padol. And I just think that there are some moments there that really are just imprinted into my head and will not leave and I'm so glad that they won't. So, we're gonna start off with the 30 and the rats. I loved the section in the book where they summon the rats and they send them out to the to the Vagrians. I just love how this section works because you get that foreshadowing of the surgeon telling the 30 that three men got eaten to death because they had to be left in a barn because there was no other space for the injured and they're like okay we'll run with that so they get all of the rats, they control all of the rats and they send them out into the Vagrians and they bite people and infest their food and do like horrible rat stuff to the Vagrian army. I mean I love like pet rats but like wartime fortress rats would probably be a very bad time and I feel like that was such a nice inclusion because you definitely would have pests like that in a fortress of that size and I just really liked the image of them sort of pied pipering everyone <laughs> I just think it's so cool. So the next section I want to talk about is Karnak in the tunnel because for some reason this had fallen out of my brain completely and it was like new to me this time and I was like how did I forget this because it's so cool. So Karnak wakes up and he hears people moving in the secret tunnels below the fortress and he's like that's not right so he goes down himself and he's like something wrong there's something wrong get people and he runs in himself and starts killing the first people that are coming through the tunnel and then he ends up destroying the tunnel while he's in it and it's just so epic and I don't know how I forgot that that even happened because it's such a cool image. It's one of the reasons that I really like Karnak so much even though like part of me doesn't like him. Uh, when he does things like that I'm like wow that's so cool. And the last little moment I want to talk about Adros Padal was Gelen and the Balliste because he just sort of walked into their camp like he was meant to be there and set fire to their weapons. And I love it because it reminds me of that thing where if you put on like a hard hat or like a workman's outfit and just walk around then people think you're supposed to be there. They don't question it because you're just, you're working aren't you? People just assume that you're meant to be there. So if you act like you're meant to be there then people assume that and Gela did that just in the enemy camp and took out two of their ballistae. And I just really like that moment and I was like yeah go Gelen. So moving over to the Waylander side of the story, I think a lot of it was really cool and definitely goes in a completely different direction to what's happening in Dross Padol. Obviously the shapeshifters, I really like how they are sort of developed as 
sort of men melded with wolves. They can't eat anything else other than Waylander. That's the only thing that will sustain them, and then if they try and eat anything else, they will be poisoned and die. They've got one purpose, and the one thing that they can eat is their target, and I just think that that's great. Because it would be pretty stupid of the Nadia to create a weapon that could then just turn on them. So the way the shapeshifters were created, it just I really like that. I mean, it's cruel and it's horrible, obviously, to both wolves and men, but for the story is really cool. I really like Kai as well. I didn't really want to mention him in the non-spoiler section because he comes into it so late. And I feel like he's such an interesting character because he's kind of a genetically mutated child that was just left alone and can do good things like healing people. I do just want to say, I, I don't know if it's because I don't remember this from when I last read the rest of the series, but I can't remember if he's in the rest of the series or creatures like him are in the rest of the series. It might be a bit random if he's not. I mean, I know that there's a reason why he is the way he is because of the properties in the water, but a little part of me is like, that's random. And I guess that kind of moves me into my one problem with this book, my one problem. And that is at the end section of this book, it's kind of like Waylander versus everyone. Like everyone is trying to kill this man all at once, at the same time, they're coming for him and they are actually actively stabbing this man and nearly murdering him. He should probably have died then. If we're being honest, he probably should not have made it out of that situation. Somebody would have killed him. I mean, I'm glad that they didn't because like, obviously, and I, I'm very happy with how this book turned out, don't get me wrong. Just if we're thinking logically about it, then uh, <laughs> there's, there's no way Waylander was making it out of that. Even with the help of magical friend Kai, that was not going to happen. So in logic land, R.I.P. Waylander, but I prefer the actual ending. So don't take me too seriously. It's just my one little gripe is that that probably could have made a bit more sense. Like he could have been a little bit less close to death. <laughs> that point or like maybe one less person was trying to kill him because it was a little bit like he just fought like all the bosses in a row and yet somehow managed to make it out alive when we all know even an epic warrior having been stabbed and like ripped apart by evil werewolf creatures like it's probably not gonna work out well it, it's not so I think I've rambled and I think I rambled way too much and I don't think I actually said everything that I really wanted to say about this book because it's just so good. I, I just can't do it justice. I think the only way to do this book justice is to read it. And if you are still watching, then I assume you've already read this book, then I recommend that you read it again because it doesn't stop being fun. It just keeps going. Every time you pick it up, it will be fun and it will be an enjoyable read. As I said, this is like the fifth time that I've read this book and I still spent the whole time grinning and going, this is such a good I'm, I'm just really happy that I reread it and I'm really happy to be doing this review for you guys. So if you enjoyed this review, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!